Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today, another ear training video, how to hear compression. I have made a detailed compression tutorial in the past, showing all the dials and parameters and meters, but this video here is gonna be much more focused on tuning and training your ear to hear all the differences that compression can make to your audio. As always in my tutorials, there are timestamps and chapter markers at the bottom of the screen. I'm starting with a solo voice example to make it very obvious, and I'll increase the complexity to a guitar in the context of a mix. So if what I'm saying is extremely boring, just skip ahead to the more complicated stuff. If you can, listen on studio monitors preferably, or headphones if you have them. This is an uncompressed audio recording into a condenser microphone, projecting and moving around a little bit as you do in the real world in a recording situation and you can see and hear that some words are much louder than others. Let's take a listen. Let's hear how adding compression affects the sound of this audio recording. Let's and compression sound very confident and forward, whereas audio recording at the end is just quiet and it drifts away, sounds a little bit timid, a little bit shy. Let's take one more listen. Let's hear how adding compression affects the sound of this audio recording. Let's now load up our compressor, which in this case is going to be the free TDR Katelnikov compressor, because I know that anyone can download and follow along with this, and it's quite a simple and visual compressor. One more time, my aim is to try and level this out so that the whole performance sounds confident and forward and projected, so that none of it sounds shy and timid. I'm going to start by increasing the ratio to about 4 to 1, because I want to have quite dramatic compression so you can really hear the differences and I'm going to adjust the threshold until I start to hear a little bit of compression. So let's press play. Let's hear how adding compression affects the sound of this audio recording. When I can hear and see some gain reduction happening on the meter over here, I'm just going to adjust the release just so that the words are released by the compressor a little bit more quickly. And then finally, I'm going to add a little bit of makeup gain just to keep everything at the same volume. Initially with these settings, what I'm hoping is that the loudest words are going to get a lot of gain reduction, so maybe even somewhere between 5 and 10 dB, I want this to be very obvious. Whereas the words at the end are not really getting much gain reduction at all, but they are having the makeup gain applied. So overall, everything should feel leveled out, but I will show this in a visual example as well. Let's take another listen to hear if it sounds leveled out. Let's hear how adding compression affects the sound of this audio recording. Let's hear how adding compression affects the sound of this audio recording. I'm going to increase the attack a little bit to make the effect even more obvious. This will pick up on the transients of the sound and really make sure that everything is held in check. Let's hear how adding compression affects the sound of this audio recording. I'll close the plugin and then I'm going to quickly render this track out to show you the difference visually. I've turned off all the effects and I'm just going to quickly change my view mode so that there's nothing behind the clips. And it should be very obvious now that while the top audio sample, the uncompressed one, has large changes in the dynamic range overall, this one at the bottom is a lot more even and consistent. It might not necessarily sound better, but it is definitely more consistent. A good way to visually represent this is to superimpose the two files. So if I drag this bottom file up, you'll see that it's underneath the green file now, but all the areas with red are areas that gain has been added, so all those phrases at the end have a lot more gain. I've turned off all the effects, and let's just take one more listen to before and after, and see if you can really hear how all of it sounds like a consistent level performance. First without compression. Let's hear how adding compression affects the sound of this audio recording. Let's hear how adding compression affects the sound of this audio recording. Let's hear how adding compression. Let's hear how adding compression. Hopefully you could hear quite a large difference between those two examples, especially the volume at the end of the clip. It really was so much louder in the compressed one. However, if you can't hear the differences, don't worry. Sometimes these things take time to really tune your ears into. Before I move on to the next example, I'm just going to quickly talk about the attack and release. The attack I will leave alone in this example, but the release is very important in making sure that the words still have quite a lot of distinction and clarity. I want the compressor to be releasing each word. I don't want it to be compressed by a loud word and then stay compressed and take a while to recover. So I'm trying to set the release so that it recovers as much as it can in between words. If I set the release much longer, 
what you hear is that it gets triggered by a loud part of a word. And then everything after that just stays really quiet as the compressor is trying to recover because it's still reducing the gain. So with a longer release, this will just sound really mushy, but it will also still have loud and quiet bits. It really doesn't sound good. Let's hear how adding compression affects the sound of this audio. Let's hear how adding compression affects the sound. It actually almost has the opposite effect that we want. So I want to just make sure that the release is letting go of those words in quite a musical way. But this will make more sense with the next example on guitar. This second example is a compression in the context of a mix. I was working on this chill lo-fi beat and I've recorded a guitar line on top that I'm going to try to fit in properly using compression. So it just started with some piano and drums. And then I put some guitar in. And when I was recording, I just played what felt right, but I really wasn't paying much attention to the actual recording. So you can hear that my velocities were just all over the place because I was recording through tons of reverb and delay and I couldn't really hear it at the time. And I thought, actually, this makes a really good example to show you how like a bad recording can still be salvaged using compression. What you heard was all the effects on in that example. So I had the compression and whatnot. But if I turn the compression off, you can hear that there's a massive difference in the volume of each of these notes. So let's take a listen in solo and then in the context of the mix. Especially here, it's just all over the place. And what it meant was getting this to sit or fit in the mix was actually quite difficult because once the piano is playing and the drums, wherever I set it, some of the notes are way too quiet other notes stick out like a sore thumb and it's just kind of uncomfortable. It takes away from the whole chill environment I was trying to make. Let's listen without effects. It's not going to sound spacious, but you'll be able to hear it. And one more time, some of the notes just stick out and others are, are far too quiet. So it's really difficult to actually set the right volume here. And of course, I could simply create an automation clip and manually adjust all of the volumes. The issue there is that's okay when you've only got, you know, eight or 16 bars to deal with. But if you've got like eight guitar tracks that last 64 bars, you're going to be doing that automation for hours. Let's just start by loading up the compressor. I'm going to listen to it in solo because I think it will help you hear the differences. So I've got the settings um, the way I want them right now, I suppose, but I've set the threshold so that the loudest notes are getting a lot of compression, but that the quietest notes are not getting much compression at all. Let's take a look and take a listen, more importantly. Let's start by simply listening to the first four notes in solo with and without compression. You really use your ears, but you can also use this gain reduction meter to see that some notes are getting a lot of gain reduction and others not so much. I'll zoom in so you can see this as well. One more time. Now I'm going to bypass the plugin and we'll take a listen without. and you're really listening for how that last note just jumps out. Now we're gonna listen in the context of the whole mix, but the guitar is still not gonna have any reverb or delay yet. I don't wanna confuse things. I'm gonna start without the compression, and I want you to really try and focus on how the guitar seems to just fall underneath the instruments and then jump out again. It might help by closing your eyes. I do find that when trying to train my ears, just forgetting about what the eyes are doing can really help because you lose that, vis that sort of stimulus and you really have to focus in on what you're hearing more. So try that if you're struggling. But this is without compression. And 
and then with compression. One more time without. With. We have still preserved a little bit of the dynamics, which is good. You can still tell that I'm digging into certain notes more or less. But overall, it actually sounds like I was playing it with a little bit more skill, a little bit more um, thought to the velocities, as opposed to just playing whatever felt right. I'm just quickly exporting this through the compression so that you can visually see the difference it makes. Just like last time, I have the uncompressed signal in green and the compressed signal in red. Now ignore these transient spikes at the start. I'll address those later with the attack. But overall, the average amplitude of each note is much more consistent on this bottom one while still retaining a bit of dynamics than this one at the top. This one at the top, they're jumping from tiny to huge, whereas here, you've got a lot more consistency, and that is the difference that you're hearing. This one just sits right where you want it to be in the mix all the time, whereas this one here is constantly just jumping above and below the level where you really want it to sit. Leveling all your tracks completely flat is not the purpose of mixing. It's not always the aim. In fact, it's very rarely always uh, the aim you want to have but there are cases, especially with guitar lines like this, where you just want things to sound consistent and level. And it's why guitarists love recording with like their compression pedals and whatnot, because it just gets you sitting in the groove exactly where you want to be at the right volume. I've gone a little bit off topic, but you can see if I zoom in, I've still got these large transient spikes at the start, and that is because of the attack time. To help you hone in on what we're listening to, this little spike here is quite a good example. So if I just select this, this little punch at the start, that's something that I want to retain. If I were to open the compressor and set the attack very, very short, you're gonna lose quite a lot of that punch. Let's listen in the context of the mix and I'll adjust the attack time. As I pull it down, each note should feel less defined and feel a little bit more mushy. What I want you to specifically listen for is that on the ones where there's almost no attack, it sounds like the note doesn't really start when it's supposed to. It sounds like it kind of hits and then just sort of gets up to the right volume. That's the way I would describe it. So we're going to take one more listen again, first with that pluck at the start, then taking it away with the attack. Really try to listen closely. If you have a very dense mix, it can be a good idea to let a little bit of that attack through by having a longer attack time because it lets you follow the melody a bit closer. But if you have a very sparse mix and you want the guitar to sit much further back, you might want to dial the attack down because you don't want it to poke through the layers. However, now it's time to add some other effects such as reverb and delay. Let's just take a listen to those. With these effects added, I'm gonna blend this guitar into the mix just so that it's really sitting in the background, but so that I can still hear every note really clearly. Let's take a listen. So at that level, because it's heavily compressed, I can actually follow the melody. The guitar doesn't really need to be that much louder unless I want it to be, you know, doing some beautiful lead line to get all the attention. However, as a final example, if I turn the compression off, but leave all the other levels the same, you'll hear now that the guitar, even with all those effects, some notes are too loud, some notes are too quiet. especially on this phrase here. The guitar is just asking for way too much attention in the mix because the volume keeps jumping up and down even with all those effects. Whereas with the compression, it 
just sounds so leveled off and so smooth. One last playthrough. So this video was a little bit longer than usual, but hopefully it was helpful in sort of training and tuning your ears in to the different effects of compression, both um, in solo and in the context of a mix. And let me know what you want to hear next in this ear training series. Bye for now.